India has reached Mars on its very first try. It's landed on the moon's south pole. It builds nuclear submarines, powerful missiles, and even stealth drones. And yet, there's one technology, one beating heart of modern air power that India still can't build on its own, a fighter jet engine. For nearly 40 years, India's Kaveri engine project has been a mix of hope, frustration, and lessons learned the hard way. It's a story that reveals why one of the world's fastest growing superpowers still struggles to build the very thing that lets a nation truly take flight. The story begins in the 1980s. India wanted freedom from dependence on foreign defense suppliers. Every imported part came with strings attached, politics, sanctions, and uncertainty. The government's vision was bold. Build a completely Indian fighter jet, the light combat aircraft, or LCA Tejas, powered by an engine made in India. This dream gave birth to the Kaveri engine project. Launched in 1989 under the Gas Turbine Research Establishment, GTRE, of DRDO, the goal was simple but ambitious. Create an advanced afterburning turbofan engine from scratch, something only a handful of nations had ever achieved. The budget looked modest, the timeline short, and the optimism sky high. India believed it could do in a few years what took others decades. But soon the engineers realized this wasn't just an engine. This was the Mount Everest of mechanical engineering. Through the 1990s, progress was steady but slow. Then came 1998. India's nuclear tests made it a declared nuclear power. And the West immediately responded with sanctions. Suddenly, critical materials and foreign expertise vanished overnight. The Kaveri team had to start improvising. They reverse-engineered parts, experimented with alloys, and kept pushing forward with limited resources. By 2004, the first real test arrived. A Kaveri prototype was flown to Russia for high-altitude trials on an Illusion 76 test aircraft. The results were disastrous. The engine stalled, underperformed, and couldn't produce enough thrust. By this time, the Tejas fighter was ready, but its engine wasn't. The Indian Air Force couldn't wait any longer. It decided to use American GF-404 engines instead. The Kaveri project was officially delinked from the Tejas program. What began as a symbol of self-reliance had turned into a long, painful reminder of how hard true independence really is. Costs kept rising from RS 3.8 billion to over RS 20 billion and the engine still couldn't meet requirements. Too heavy, too thirsty, too weak. So why is this one piece of technology so difficult? Why can India send spacecraft to Mars, but still struggle with a jet engine? There are three big reasons, materials testing and ecosystem. Inside a fighter jet engine, temperatures reach over 1,500 ticks, hotter than the melting point of most metals. Turbine blades must survive this hellish environment while spinning over 10,000 times a minute. These blades are made from single crystal super alloys, metal grown as a single flawless crystal so it doesn't crack under heat or stress. Only a few companies in the world can make them reliably. Rolls-Royce, GE, Safran. For decades, India simply couldn't replicate that process. Designing an engine is one thing. Proving it works is another. You need advanced test facilities to simulate freezing, low pressure conditions at high altitude and scorching heat at low altitude. India didn't have many such facilities, meaning each failure set the project back by months, even years. And then there's the ecosystem. Countries that make jet engines, the US, UK, France, Russia, have decades of industrial know-how, suppliers and private companies that make precision parts. In India, GTRE had to do almost everything alone, often from scratch. There were no private aerospace companies ready to fill the gaps. Today, India is taking a smarter path. Instead of reinventing the wheel, it's seeking partnerships with Francis Safran, the makers of Rafale's M88 engine, to co-develop a new engine for future Indian jets like the AMCA. The Kaveri project may not have powered a fighter, but it gave India something equally valuable the knowledge of what not to do and the blueprint for what to do next.
Building a jet engine is like creating controlled chaos. Fire, air and metal balanced perfectly at the edge of destruction. Only a few nations have mastered it. India is getting closer, step by step, because in the end, the dream of flight of true independence is not something a nation gives up on. It just learns to fly smarter.